In December 2020, China's Change 5 mission made history by becoming the first mission in over four decades to return lunar soil samples to Earth. These samples, retrieved from a region on the moon known as Oceanus Percelarum, were expected to provide insights into the moon's geological history. However, what researchers found within the dust was completely unexpected. Graphene, a material that has never before been detected naturally on the moon, graphene is a two-dimensional form of carbon arranged in a honeycomb lattice that is just one atom thick. It's incredibly strong, lightweight, and an excellent conductor of electricity making it one of the most valuable materials being studied today for its potential applications in electronics, energy storage, and more. To find graphene, a material that is usually created in labs under controlled conditions, on the moon's surface challenges much of what we knew about lunar composition and the formation of the moon. The presence of graphene in these lunar samples comes after decades of assumptions about the moon's chemistry. In the past, lunar missions, such as those by the Apollo astronauts, found very little carbon in the moon's surface. This led scientists to believe that the moon, formed from debris ejected by a violent collision with early Earth, was likely carbon poor and dry. However, these assumptions began to shift with the findings from Japan's Kaguya spacecraft in 2020, which detected traces of carbon across nearly the entire lunar surface. These early discoveries hinted that carbon may not be as rare on the moon as once believed, but the detection of graphene takes this idea even further. The discovery of graphene in the Change 5 samples was made possible through Raman spectroscopy, a technique that uses laser light to probe the atomic structure of materials. A research team led by Wei Zhang at Jilin University used this method to study tiny grains of the lunar soil. The analysis revealed clear spectral signatures characteristic of multilayer graphene, which is formed when carbon atoms stack in sheets that are just a few atoms thick. This marked the first time that natural, high-quality graphene had been detected in lunar material, opening up entirely new questions about the moon's chemistry and its geological history. At first glance, the idea that graphene, a highly structured, two-dimensional form of carbon, could exist on the moon might seem outlandish. After all, the moon lacks an atmosphere, and its surface is constantly exposed to the harsh bombardment of solar, wind, and cosmic rays, conditions that usually destroy or degrade carbon-based materials. But this discovery suggests that, under certain circumstances, graphene can form naturally in this seemingly hostile environment. To understand how this could happen, researchers look to the moon's surface conditions. While the lack of atmosphere on the moon would normally make it difficult for carbon to survive, solar wind, a constant stream of charged particles emitted by the sun, has been shown to carry carbon atoms. These particles are known to bombard the moon's surface continuously, and they may provide a source for the carbon found in the samples. Additionally, the lunar soil is rich in iron-bearing minerals, and it's believed that these iron-rich particles could have played a key role in the formation of graphene. The process that led to the formation of graphene likely involves a combination of heat and chemical reactions. During solar wind interactions, particles on the moon's surface can become heated to temperatures over to zero degrees Fahrenheit, enough to cause plasma flashes, short bursts of intense heat caused by charged particles. These brief but extreme heating events, along with the presence of iron particles in the lunar dust, may have acted as catalysts, promoting the formation of graphene from carbon atoms that were deposited on the surface by the solar wind. In fact, laboratory experiments on Earth show that graphene can form at temperatures as low as 750 to degrees Fahrenheit for 100 degrees Celsius, which aligns with the conditions on the moon's surface. 
It's likely that the graphene found in the Change 5 samples was formed during brief heating events, which allowed the carbon atoms to bond together and arrange themselves into the characteristic honeycomb structure of graphene. What makes this discovery even more remarkable is the quality of the graphene found. The Raman analysis revealed that the graphene was not just a random accumulation of carbon. It was a well-structured, high-quality material with very few defects. This suggests that the conditions on the moon's surface were not only capable of creating graphene, but that the material formed in a way that mirrors the high-quality graphene produced in laboratories here on Earth. The implications of this discovery go far beyond simply adding a new piece to our understanding of the moon's surface chemistry. It forces scientists to reconsider the long-standing models of the moon's formation. The giant impact hypothesis which posits that the moon was formed from the debris of a Mars-sized object that collided with Earth, has been the dominant explanation for the moon's origin for over four decades. According to this theory, the moon's carbon-rich materials would have been vaporized in the heat of the impact, leaving behind a barren, carbon-poor surface. However, the discovery of graphene in the moon's soil complicates this narrative, if carbon was present during the moon's early formation, how did it survive the intense heat of the impact? And if carbon survived in some form, what does that say about the nature of the moon's formation? It's possible that the moon accumulated carbon over time through solar wind deposition, or that the carbon present during the formation of the moon was trapped in the mantle and later re-released through volcanic activity. Some scientists are now exploring alternative models that suggest the moon could have gradually accumulated carbon through a slow process of accretion from the solar wind, or that the carbon was re-accreted during a prolonged magma ocean phase after the giant impact. These theories could explain how the moon's surface, once thought to be carbon poor, might contain significant amounts of carbon, including forms like graphene. Beyond the implications for lunar science, the discovery of graphene on the moon also has profound implications for the future of space exploration and lunar resource utilization. Graphene's unique properties, strength, flexibility, and electrical conductivity make it a material of great interest for a wide range of applications including electronics, energy storage, and even radiation shielding. Given that graphene is now known to exist on the moon, future lunar explorers may be able to mine the moon's surface for this material, along with more traditional resources like water and oxygen, to create sustainable habitats and technologies. Graphene could be used to reinforce lunar radiation shields, a critical component for protecting astronauts from the sun's harmful radiation. It could also be used in energy storage systems such as supercapacitors to store power for lunar bases. Additionally, its lightweight and flexible nature make it ideal for building electronics or conducting research in extreme environments. The moon could become a source of valuable materials that would allow future lunar explorers to manufacture key resources locally without the need to transport expensive equipment and materials from Earth. The fact that graphene was found alongside iron in the same samples raises the possibility that the moon's surface could be a rich source of materials that could be harvested using relatively simple techniques. Iron particles, combined with magnetic separation methods, could allow for efficient extraction of graphene without requiring complex machinery to be sent from Earth. This opens up exciting possibilities for in-situ resource utilization INS are you on the moon, allowing future missions to create materials directly on the lunar surface and reduce reliance on Earth-based supply chains. In the long term, this discovery could play a major role in the development of sustainable lunar habitats, as graphene and other materials could be used to build structures, store energy, and filter water on the moon it could also pave the way for future missions that mine the moon for resources 
that could be used in deep space exploration, providing the materials necessary for building spacecraft and habitats that will take us to Mars and beyond. The discovery of graphene in lunar dust is just the beginning. As future missions return with deeper, more diverse lunar samples, scientists will continue to unravel the moon's complex history and its potential as a source of vital resources for space exploration. What was once thought to be a barren, carbon poor world is now revealed to have an unexpectedly rich chemistry, one that could help fuel the future of humanity's exploration of the cosmos.